in this uh, video we'll talk about protein digestion now the proteins that we take normally come from pulses or sprouts it can be from egg meat and uh, non vegetarian food also now uh, again we'll go as per the location so the first location is the buccal cavity buccal cavity produces saliva and saliva has no protein digesting enzyme so here we'll write that saliva has no proteolytic enzymes and that is why there is no protein digestion which takes place here the next location is stomach stomach contains two main protein digesting enzymes but these enzymes are in their inactive state so first they need to be activated first is pepsinogen it gets activated into pepsin with the help of hydrochloric acid and we have seen the functions of hydrochloric acid one it helps in activation of pepsinogen into pepsin plus it is also going to provide the optimum ph which is required for the action of these enzymes now the pepsin is active this pepsin acts on proteins and these proteins which are larger molecules are broken down into peptones and proteoses proteoses and peptones are smaller peptides that means they are smaller polysaccharide molecules the enzyme which is helping here is pepsin the ph at which this enzyme works is 1.2 to 1.8 highly acidic ph and this is also provided by hydrochloric acid so proteins are broken down into smaller polypeptide chains the second enzyme which is there is in, again in the form of an inactive one it is proreenin proreenin is to be activated first into active enzyme that is renin this activation is done by pepsin renin acts only on milk protein that is casein so casein that is milk protein is acted upon by this renin and it is converted into para casein this para casein in presence of calcium para casein in presence of calcium ions is converted into calcium para caseinate which is curd like substance and it remains in the stomach it is acted upon by pepsin now so this would be now acted upon by pepsin and will be broken down into again smaller polypeptide so this here there would be pepsin acting on it and this would give us again peptones and proteoses pepsin can digest all proteins except keratin keratin is found in hair nails horns and it cannot be digested even by pepsin pepsin can digest all including collagen but cannot digest keratin which is found in hair nails etc so these are the two protein digesting enzymes which are found in the gastric juice in the stomach region Pro, uh, pepsin first is activated then it breaks down those bigger protein molecules into smaller and renin after activation can break down only the milk protein 
concentration of lenin decreases as we get older and human beings are the only mammals in whom renin is produced in adult age also though the uh, concentration goes on decreasing but in adult human beings small quantity of renin is produced in all other mammals excluding human beings renin production takes place only in younger age adults do not produce renin for example it would be produced in calf but it is not produced in adult cows only human beings can produce renin but concentration goes on decreasing now after stomach the food comes to the third location that is the duodenum part that is the part of small intestine here there are three different juices which are acted or which are pore one is bile and bile has no digestive enzyme as such so no enzyme so no digestion no enzyme and that is why it does not help in digestion now there are pro, uh, pancreatic juice or pancreatic enzymes and intestinal enzymes so let us see what happens when proteins come into the duodenum part in pancreatic juice again there are two very strong proteases and both of them are also in their inactive form first is trypsinogen it has to be first converted into its active form that is trypsin and this activation is done by entero kinase entero kinase is produced by or is present in intestinal juice and trypsinogen is in pancreatic juice after this trypsin is formed once it is activated it helps in its own activation it is known as auto catalytic action auto catalytic so first few molecules of trypsin once they get activated with the help of enterokinase they help in their own activation similarly the next one is trypsin uh, uh, trypsinogen into trypsin then chymotrypsinogen chymo trypsinogen has to be activated into chymo trypsin and this activation is done by trypsin all these reactions which are going to take place in duodenum are going to take place in basic ph whatever takes place in stomach is in the acidic ph here the ph is going to be base so trypsin is now active chymotrypsin is also active the other enzymes are also activated like pro carboxypeptidase is and all after this let us see how these uh, enzymes they act on the proteins which are entering into the duodenum part the proteins which enter duodenum will be acted upon by these so proteins are acted upon by trypsin chymotrypsin and the ph at which these reactions are taking place is around 8.6 to 8.8 that is basic ph and these proteins are broken down into smaller molecules that is proteoses and peptones these are smaller uh, polypeptides so in the stomach also by the action of pepsin what we get is the, these two substances here also by the action of trypsin as well as chymotrypsin we are getting smaller molecules now these peptones and proteoses peptones and proteoses are acted upon by other enzymes like carboxy peptidase which is present in pancreatic juice and amino peptidase 
which is present in intestinal juice. pH remains the same that is 8.6 to 8.8 and now because these two are exopeptidases they act on the terminal uh, peptide bonds we get amino acids and some dipeptides di peptides that means there are two peptide bonds slightly bigger molecule these dipeptides are acted upon by the enzymes called dipeptidases and these dipeptidases would break the remaining bonds to release the amino acids that means all the proteins which were consumed, they were acted upon by three main endopeptidases. One is pepsin, which was in stomach, trypsin and chymotrypsin. We are not talking about renin here because it acts only on the milk protein. So three main, that is pepsin, trypsin and chymotrypsin. And these three break the larger protein molecules into smaller peptide chains which are called peptones and proteoses. Then there are two exopeptidases that is carboxypeptidase and aminopeptidases. They act on peptones and proteoses and break it down into amino acids because they are exopeptidases they would act on terminal bonds and some even smaller peptides where dipeptides are produced. That dipeptides means they would have two peptide bonds. They are acted upon by enzymes called dipeptidases and finally all amino acids are broken down into, sorry, all uh, proteins are broken down into amino acids. So amino acids are the smallest units of proteins and so we can say that digestion gets completed here because all proteins have been broken down into amino acids. As we talked about uh, pepsin, we said it can digest all proteins except keratin. Trypsin has limited action on collagen. Trypsin has limited action on collagen fibers that means they can break it but very less but trypsin has no action on casein that is milk protein and keratin no action on casein and keratin so we are talking about this uh, trypsin and pepsin as very strong protein digesting enzymes but still they cannot act on keratin, both of these. Pepsin can act on collagen, but trypsin has a limited action. Renin can act on casein, but uh, trypsin has no action on casein also. So this completes protein digestion. The next substance which needs to be digested is fat that we will take up in the next video.